Hi, welcome to In the Kitchen with Elizabeth. I'm Elizabeth Breakstraw, and I'm going to be sharing with you some of my moments of joy. Today we are going to be making these awesome red velvet brownies, which make the perfect ending to your romantic dinner with your honey on Valentine's Day. So, are you ready? Let's get started. Um, I'm a minimalist in the kitchen, so we don't really require a lot of special tools for this recipe. You'll literally only need a whisk for mixing. Um, you want to have at least two, if not three, spatulas, and you'll see why later. You're going to need a knife, and you're going to need two spoons. The only special type of equipment that we really need is parchment paper, and also a heart-shaped cookie cutter, unless you feel particularly brave and think that you'd like some interesting shaped hearts, and we will show you later on exactly what we're going to do with the cookie cutter. So we've gone ahead and prepared our pan. You can use your uh, whatever your favorite nonstick spray is, whether it's plain oil, or you can also choose to just spread butter on the inside of the pan in a thin layer. And then you're going to want to place a sheet of parchment paper on the inside. The parchment paper is not mandatory, but considering that we're going to be trying to get the brownies out in one piece, I can tell you from personal experience that it's much, much easier if you add the parchment paper in there as well. Then we're also going to want to preheat the oven to 350 degrees, and you'll be ready to go. So we're going to be using, for the cream cheese layer, 10 ounces of cream cheese, one third of a cup of sugar, two eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla paste, and vanilla paste is very important. Um, it's going to add additional flavor. Um, you can actually see the vanilla seeds in it, and it makes a huge difference in the quality of the end product. And then a half a teaspoon of salt. We're going to be mixing um, thoroughly between each addition. And you're going to want to just um, whisk away at the cream cheese until it's as smooth as you can get it. And sometimes it's more difficult than other times. sugar. And it'll get easier as it goes. Once we add the eggs, it'll um, smooth out quite a bit. Now in this portion of the recipe, we aren't going to pre-mix the eggs. But in the brownie layer, we will, and I'll explain why when we get to the brownie layer. So you're going to make sure that you get <coughs> all of the lumps out from the cream cheese. And it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, but you're going to want to make sure that at least all of the major lumps are out of it. And then we add the vanilla paste. And the salt. So I got my love of baking from my mother, standing next to her on a step stool in the kitchen. And I'm hoping that these segments will help ignite your passion for baking as well. I was very fortunate because my mother allowed me a lot of flexibility to find my way and find what worked for me. Um, so as we go through these segments, I'm going to try to let you know where you could be creative and where you need to be sticking to the instructions just for safety's sake. So. Um, now that uh, we have the uh, cream cheese layer fully mixed, we're just going to set that off to the side. And 
and then we'll start on the brownie layer. So we're going to start with um, six ounces of melted butter, one and a half cups of regular granulated sugar, three teaspoons of the vanilla paste, one third of a cup cocoa, and again, um, the quality of the ingredients is key here because the cocoa is going to be a huge driver in the flavor, so you want to use a fine quality cocoa powder. One and a half tablespoons of red food coloring, three eggs, one teaspoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of vinegar, and then one cup plus two tablespoons of flour. So we start with the melted butter. And then I like to add the sugar in kind of a stream to get it fully incorporated. And you'll see this one is much easier than trying to mix the uh, cream cheese was. Then we're going to add the vanilla. fully incorporate the cocoa. And the red food coloring. Now when it comes to brownies, brownies are one of those things along with muffins that you don't want to overmix because if you overmix, you'll end up with kind of a tough dough um, and it won't rise as much. So um, to get these, uh, to get the eggs in here, we're actually going to just lightly whisk them in the bowl so that we don't have to overbeat once we get them into the bowl with the rest of the batter. Then to fully activate the baking soda, we're actually going to pour the vinegar into the baking soda and you'll see that it bubbles up. Kind of looks like Alka-Seltzer. So you want to take a spatula, small spatula, so you can make sure that you get all of that baking soda out of the bowl. And just lightly stir that in. And we'll take the flour. And again, you don't want to overmix here. You want to just stir it until you don't see any more streaks of flour. But don't be beating it. You're going to do more like a folding action um, to get it incorporated. Okay. Don't you just love red velvet? And this is such a great application of red velvet. Nobody ever thinks of a red velvet brownie. So we're going to take our pan. And first what we need to do is take a half cup measure, and this doesn't need to be exact. And you're going to want to reserve about a half a cup of the batter. And you'll see in just a minute what we're going to do with that. I'm going to give this one more stir as we get it into the pan. And don't worry if you see slight clumps of flour as you're putting it in. As you spread it out, those will go away. And then we're going to spread it into the pan as evenly as we can, but don't go too crazy. 
because we're going to be kind of playing with our food here in just a minute. So it doesn't need to be perfectly flat, but you want it to be even, and you want it to be out to the corners of the pan, like this. And then we're going to take a clean spatula so that we don't get too much red in our white cream cheese layer that we're not doing on purpose anyway. And you want to make sure that as you're pouring it, you're getting it um, as much all over the pan as you can um, because we don't want to be mixing up the layers too much until we're ready to do it. So once you get it in there, you can just lift the pan and then carefully tilt it so that you get the cream cheese layers out to the corners. Then we're going to take our two spoons and we're going to take small dollops of the reserved uh, batter. And I'm kind of meticulous, um, and some people would use a different word. Um, but So I like to put the dollops into a pattern. But you're certainly free um, to be more of a free spirit than I am, um, and to <laughs> arrange the dollops of batter in whatever way makes you happy because, as you'll see in a minute, we're just going to be kind of smearing it all around anyway. Um, so don't worry about being uh, too meticulous about it. Now comes the fun and creative part. So um, I like to turn the pan this way. You can certainly do it in whatever direction you want. Um, and I also have this uh, method that I use, but if you have a way that works better for you, I take the tip of a knife, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull the knife through the dough and through those dollops. And I use kind of a figure eight pattern um, just because I find that's easier and I like the look of it. So I like the look of it um, to use the figure eight, <coughs> but again, if there's another pattern that makes you happy, um, then certainly feel free. So this may not look like much right now, uh, but once we get this in the oven, you'll find that the red brownie layer will actually rise up and bake through the top layer. So we are going to take uh, the pan and we're going to place it in our 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. See in 30. Oh my god, these smell amazing. And the entire house is full of that cocoa aroma from the um, red velvet part of the brownie. So while these are still warm, what we're going to do is take a thin, sharp knife and we're just going to run it right around the edges because this will make it um, much easier on us um, for the next step, <coughs> which you'll see shortly. So once we do that, these can just sit here and rest. And while they're resting and coming to room temperature, I'm going to prepare a plate with some red doilies so we can make this look really beautiful for the presentation. Now we have our plate all ready, so we're going to set that over here and get to work on the brownies. So what we're going to do is we need to get the brownies out of the pan and we need to have them facing right side up. So I normally take a cooling rack and just flip them onto the cooling rack. And see this is where the parchment paper comes in handy because um, it almost ensures um, a very easy release. Um, then I take a cutting board, and then we're going to flip again. So 
we see now we end up with um, the brownies all right side up. Now we're going to take our cookie cutter and we are going to cut heart shapes. And what I normally do in order to maximize the number of brownies we can get um, is to flip it right side up and then upside down. So I'm sure the tradition of baking things for people on Valentine's Day goes back um, quite a long time and I have to confess that one of the reasons I fell in love with my husband was because <clears throat> on Valentine's Day, the first year we were together, he actually baked me a key lime pie. Um, and at the time, he wasn't much of a cook, and he definitely wasn't a baker. But I have to tell you that his first attempt um, was enough to make me want to fall in love with him. So now we're in the home stretch. We're almost done. So if you've cleanly cut all of these, then it should be a simple matter of just pulling away the dough. And I'll have to admit that sometimes I do not fully maximize um, because we're going to put these in a pan and they make great nibbles for later. So. so we'll just pull away the extra dough. And then you can take a spatula transfer them right to the plate. Don't they look beautiful? Oh my god, now it's finally my turn for the taste test. Mmm, so good. The cream cheese is creamy, it's kind of a buttery taste to it, and it balances the rich taste of the cocoa in the red velvet. Great thing about these is that they're not overly sweet, um, so it's a very good balance, very delicious. I'm sure your guests or your, your loved one um, will truly enjoy these. So I'm going to save these scraps. Actually what I should do is just attach them right to my hips um, because we know I'm going to be picking at them later as the day goes on. So you can find the recipe for these red velvet brownies on my blog at emojblog.com. And I hope you'll join us next month when we'll be celebrating the luck of the Irish by making Irish soda bread and Irish tea cake, two of my childhood favorites that bring back lots of great memories with my mom. So thank you very much for joining us today. Hope to see you again in the future. And in the meantime, I'm wishing you moments of joy. Thanks again.